Greetings everyone and welcome to a new chapter where we will discuss inventory along with cost of goods sold. After studying this chapter, we will be able to um, comprehend the trace, uh, the ability to trace the flow of inventory costs from manufacturing companies to merchandising companies, understanding how cost of goods sold is reported in a multiple step income statement. We'll be able to determine the cost of goods sold and ending inventory using different inventory cost methods. We'll explain the financial statement effects and tax effects on inventory cost method methods. Recording inventory transactions using a perpetual inventory system. And we'll also be able to understand the terms lower of cost and net realizable value rule for inventories. We'll be able to analyze management of inventory using an inventory turnover ratio and gross profit ratio. We'll record inventory transactions using a periodic system and ultimately determine the financial statement effects of inventory errors. We've got a lot to cover in this chapter. Now in this section, we'll introduce the concept of inventory and demonstrate the different methods used to calculate the cost of inventory for external reporting. So here we're going to begin by tracing the flow of in inventory costs from manufacturing companies to merchandising companies. So inventory includes items a company intends for sale to customers. You're familiar with several types of inventory, clothes at the limited, shoes at Payless shoe store, grocery items at public supermarkets, digital equipment at Best Buy, building supplies at the Home Depot, on and on and on. Inventory also includes items that are not yet finished products. <clears throat> so for instance, lumber at a cabinet manufacturer, steel at a construction firm, and rubber at a tire manufacturer are part of inventory because the firm will use them to make a finished product for sale to customers. We generally report inventory as a current asset on the balance sheet. An asset because it represents a valuable resource to the company and current because the company expects to convert it to cash in the near term. At the end of the period, the amount of the company reports for inventory is the cost of inventory not yet sold. But what happens to the cost of the inventory sold during the period. The company reports the cost of the inventory it sold as cost of goods sold in the income statement. Determining the amount of ending inventory and cost of goods sold is a critical task in accounting for inventory. Inventory is also referred to as merchandise inventory, while cost of goods sold is also referred to as cost of sales, cost of merchandise sold, or cost of products sold. Merchandising companies purchase inventory that are primarily in finished form for resale to customers. We can broadly classify merchandising companies as wholesalers or retailers. Wholesalers resell inventory to retail companies or to professional users. Retailers purchase inventory from manufacturers or wholesalers and then sell this inventory to end users. Now manufacturing companies manufacture the inventories they sell rather than buying them in finished form from suppliers. Raw materials inventory includes the cost of components that will become part of the finished product but have not yet been used in production. Work in process inventory includes products that have been started in the production process but are not yet complete at the end of the period. 
finished goods inventory consists of items for which the manufacturing process is complete. At any given time, Intel's inventory includes the cost of materials that will be used to build computer components, which would be raw materials, partially manufactured components, also called work in process, and fully assembled but unsold products, which are finished goods. These separate inventory accounts are added together and reported by Intel as total inventories. Other companies such as Best Buy don't manufacture computers, but purchase finished computers from manufacturers to sell to consumers. These computers represent merchandise ready for sale to customers like you and me. This slide shows the different inventory accounts for Intel and Best Buy as reported in their balance sheets. This slide shows the flow of inventory costs for the three types of companies, service, manufacturing, and merchandising. <clears throat> now, a key point to be aware of is that service companies record revenues when providing service to customers. Merchandising and manufacturing companies record revenues when selling inventory to customers. <clears throat> Let's look at a question here. Which of the following inventory accounts consists of items for which the manufacturing process is complete? Would it be A, raw materials, B, work in process, C, cost of goods sold, or D, finished goods? Raw materials inventory is the cost of components that will become finished goods. Work in process inventory consists of products that are not yet complete, <coughs> and cost of goods sold is not an inventory account, but represents the cost of inventory sold during the period. Now we're going to understand how cost of goods sold is reported in a multiple step income statement. Let's look at the relationship between ending inventory in the balance sheet and cost of goods sold in the income statement. We'll use a simple example for a local Best Buy. Assume the store begins the year with $20,000 of DVD player inventory. That amount represents how much Best Buy spent to purchase the inventory of DVD players on hand at the beginning of the year. During the year, the company purchases additional DVD players for $90,000. The total cost of inventory, the DVD players, available for sale is $110,000, which is the beginning inventory plus the purchases during the year. Of the $110,000 in inventory available for sale, Assume that by the end of the year, the purchase cost of the remaining DVD players not sold equals 30000 This is the amount reported for ending inventory. If 30000 of the inventory available for sale was not sold, then the remaining portion of 80000 which is the 110 minus the 30000 was sold and will be reported as cost of goods sold. Now a key point to be reminded of is inventory will always be a current asset reported in the balance sheet and it represents the cost of inventory not yet sold at the end of the period. Cost of goods sold is an expense that's reported in the income statement and represents the cost of inventory sold. So let's ask another question here. <clears throat> cost of goods sold is A, reported in the income statement, B, reported in the balance sheet, C, a current asset, 
or D, the cost of inventory on hand at the end of the period. Hope you got that right. It's in the income statement. Cost of goods sold is an expense account. <coughs> Amounts included those from Best Buy's actual income statement in 2015, excluding small adjustments for discontinued operations and non-controlling interest. Now, the name multiple step income statements referring to the fact that the income statement report, reports multiple levels of income or profitability. The reason why companies choose this multiple step format is to show the revenue and expenses that arise from different types of activities. So by separating revenues and expenses into their different types, investors and creditors are better able to determine the source of the company's profitability. Understanding the compon components of current profitability often enables a better prediction of future profitability. Now, gross profit is the first level of profit shown in the multiple step uh, income statement and is calculated as net sales minus cost of goods. That's really important that you remember that. Operating incomes, the next step after gross profit. The next items reported are selling, general and administrative expenses often referred to as operating expenses like rent, utilities, salaries. Gross profit reduced by these operating expenses is referred to as operating income or sometimes referred to as income from operations. It measures profitability from normal operations, a key performance measure for predicting the future profit generating ability of a company. Then income before income taxes. So after operating income, a company reports non-operating revenues and expenses which commonly include interest expense. Non-operating revenue and expenses arise from activities that are not part of the company's primary operations. Non-operating expenses would also include losses on the sale of investments or long-term assets. Investors focus less on non-operating revenues and expenses than on income from operations because non-operating activities often do not have long-term implications on the company's profitability. Combining operating income with non-operating revenues and expenses yields income before income taxes. Then net income. A company subtracts income tax expense to find its bottom line net income. Income tax expense is reported separately because it represents a significant expense. Another key point to be made here is that a multiple step income statement reports multiple levels of profitability. Know the various steps. The gross profit is the revenues minus cost of goods sold. Then we have operating income which is the gross profit minus operating expenses. We have income before income taxes which equals operating income plus non-operating revenues and minus any non-operating expenses. Then we have the net income, which is all revenues minus all expenses. Which level of profitability is considered profit from normal operations? Would it be A, gross profit, B, operating income, C, income before taxes, D, net income. Operating income is measured as gross profit 
sales revenue minus cost of goods sold is gross profit minus operating expenses. Income before taxes and net income include non-operating items, which aren't considered part of normal operations. Next, we're going to look at the, determining the cost of goods sold in ending inventories using different types of inventory cost methods. We can determine the cost of inventory by considering four methods for inventory costing. First, we have the specific identification method, which matches or identifies each unit of inventory with its actual cost. It's used primarily by companies selling unique, expensive products, such as homes or automobiles. FIFO, first in, first out, assumes the first units purchased are the first ones that are sold. LIFO assumes that the last units purchased are the first ones sold. And then last, the weighted average cost method assumes that both cost of goods sold and ending inventory consist of a random mixture of all the goods available for sale. To see how the three cost flow assumptions work, let's look at the slide. Mario's Game Shop sells video game controllers. Mario has 100 units of inventory at the beginning of the year and then makes two purchases during the year, one on April 25th and one on October 19th. Note that the unit costs are different at the time of each purchase. There are 1,000 game controllers available for sale. During the year, Mario sells 800 video game controllers for $500 each. This means that 200 controllers remain in ending inventory at the end of the year. Now using the FIFO method, <clears throat> which is first in, first out, we assume that beginning inventory sells first, followed by the inventory from the first purchase during the year, followed by the inventory from the second purchase during the year, and so on. So since 800 units are sold, we assume that all units from beginning inventory, which consists of 100 units, and the April 25 purchase gives us 300 units were sold. For the final 400 units sold, we split the October 19th purchase of 600 units into two groups. 400 units assumed sold and 200 units assumed not sold. So the cost of goods sold reported in the income statement will be 7,800, <clears throat> which is the 100 times 7 plus the 300 times 9 and then the 400 times 11. And the ending inventory reported in the balance sheet will be 2200, which is the 200 times 11. Now it's important to remind you that this cost flow is how we report it financially on paper. That does not necessarily mean that they <clears throat> had the first ones in or actually the first ones out. It does not entail the necessary physical flow, but this is how we do it on paper. Using the LIFO method, we assume that the last units purchased are the first ones out. So since 800 units were sold, we assume all the 600 units purchased on October 19th, which was the last purchase, were sold along with 200 units from the April 25th purchase. That leaves 100 of the units from the April 25th purchase and all 100 units from beginning inventory assumed to remain in ending inventory that aren't sold. So the cost of goods sold reported in the income statement will be the 8400, which would be the 200 
units at nine bucks plus the 600 units at 11 bucks. And the ending inventory reported in the balance sheet will be 1600, which is the 100 units at seven bucks and the 100 units at nine bucks. Many students find it amazing that companies are allowed to report inventory costs using assumed amounts rather than actual amounts. Nearly all companies sell their actual inventory in a FIFO manner. First in is the first they submit and send out. But they're allowed to report it as if they sold it in a LIFO manner. We'll see later why that's an advantage option to take. So let's check your understanding. A company has the following inventory transactions. January 1st, beginning inventory, 100 units at four bucks each. January 15th, a purchase of 100 units at five bucks each. January 31st is a purchase of 100 units at six bucks each. What would be the cost of goods sold under the FIFO method if 120 units were sold in January. Remember, FIFO means the first ones in are the first ones you're going to show that was sold. So as you see, the FIFO method would take the first 100 units that were in beginning inventory times four bucks and then take 20 units from the January 15th purchase at five bucks to make the 120 units the cost would be five hundred dollars. Let's look at another one here. The company has the following inventory transactions. What would be the cost of goods sold under the LIFO method? Remember with LIFO, the last ones in will be the first ones we show to be sold. So the last ones in would be the January 31st purchase, 100 units at six bucks, and then we would take 20 units at the January 15th purchase, 20 at five bucks. So this would show the cost of goods sold, 700. So as you can see, it's a significant difference between FIFO versus LIFO. So as you see, the inventory that remains on the balance sheet is going to be altered between the two methods, as will the cost of goods sold. Now using the weighted average cost method we assume that both cost of goods sold and ending inventory consist of a random mixture of all the goods available for sale. We assume each unit of inventory has a cost equal to the weighted average unit cost of all inventory items. So 800 units were sold sorry 800 units are sold and 200 units are still in inventory which means they weren't sold by dividing the cost of goods available for sale by the number of units available for sale we determined the weighted average cost of each game controller is 10 bucks even though none of the game controllers actually cost 10 bucks using this amount we calculate the cost of goods sold as eight thousand dollars which would be 800 at 10 bucks and we would show the inventory to be um, two thousand bucks which is the 200 times 10 bucks A common mistake often made in calculating the weighted average 
make sure you use a weighted average of the cost unit instead of a simple average. So in the example from that previous slide, there are three units cost. One's seven, one's nine, and one's eleven. The simple average would be just to add all three, seven plus nine, eleven, and divide them by three. That's a simple average. But we need to weigh the unit costs based on the number of units purchased. We do that by taking the total cost of goods available for sale divided by the total number of units available for sale to come up with a weighted average of 10. Now this slide shows a comparison of cost of goods sold and ending inventory under the three inventory cost flow assumptions for Mario's game shop. Let's take a moment to review these computations and carefully to make sure you really understand the various cost flow assumptions. Notice that there are 1,000 units available for sale. These units had a total cost of $10,000. Of the 1,000 units available, 800 were sold, which means 200 remain in ending inventory at the end of the year. Which 800 units were sold? Well, under FIFO, we assume the first 800 units purchased were sold. Under LIFO, we assume the last 800 units purchased were sold. And then under the weighted average, we assume the units sold had an average cost of 10 bucks equal to a total cost of 10,000 divided by total units available of 1,000. Remember, companies are allowed to report inventory costs by assuming which specific units of inventory are sold and not sold, even if this does not match the actual flow. Three major inventory cost flows, flow assumptions. They're FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, and then weighted average cost. We're going to now look at the financial statement effects and tax effects of these various cost methods. So companies are free to choose LIFO, FIFO, or weighted cost average to report inventory and cost of goods sold. However, because inventory costs generally change over time, the reported amounts for ending inventory and cost of goods sold will not be the same across inventory reporting methods. These differences could cause investors and creditors to make bad decisions if they're not aware of differences in inventory assumptions. Accountants often call FIFO the balance sheet approach. The amount it reports for ending inventory, which appears in the balance sheet, better approximates the current cost of inventory. So the ending inventory amount reported under LIFO, in contrast, generally includes old inventory costs that do not realistically represent the cost of today's inventory. Accountants often call LIFO the income statement approach because the amount it reports for cost of goods sold, which appears in the income statement, more realistically matches the current cost of inventory needed to produce current revenues. This slide compares FIFO, LIFO, and the weighted average cost methods for Mario's Game Shop. This is assuming rising costs. When inventory costs are rising, Mario's Game Shop will report both higher inventory in the balance sheet and higher gross profit in the income statement if it chooses FIFO. The reason is that FIFO assumes the lower costs of the earlier purchases 
become cost of goods sold first, leaving the higher costs of the later purchases in ending inventory. Under the same assumption, rising inventory costs, LIFO will produce the opposite effect. LIFO will report both the lowest inventory and the lowest gross profit. The weighted average cost typically produces amounts that fall between FIFO and LIFO amounts for both cost of goods sold and for ending inventory. Because of the financial statement effects of different inventory methods, companies that choose LIFO must report the difference in the amount of inventory a company would report if it used FIFO instead of LIFO. This difference is sometimes referred to as the LIFO reserve. For some companies that have been using LIFO for a long time, or for companies that have seen dramatic increases in inventory costs, the LIFO difference can be substantial. This slide shows the effect of the LIFO difference reported by Rite Aid Corporation, which uses LIFO to account for most of its inventory. If Rite Aid had used FIFO instead of LIFO, reported inventory amounts would have been 998 million greater and 1 million, 1 1,119 million greater in 2015 and 2014, respectively. Generally, FIFO more closely resembles actual flow of inventory. When inventory costs rise, FIFO results in higher reported inventory in the balance sheet and higher reported income in the income statement. Opposite, LIFO results in a lower reported inventory and net income, reducing the company's income tax obligation. So what do you think here? During a period of rising prices, which inventory cost flow assumption would result in the highest cost of goods sold and thereby the lowest net income? Would it be FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, or FILO? LIFO. Never heard of FILO before. LIFO, we assume the last units purchased are the first ones sold. So when prices are rising, the cost of goods sold would be composed of the highest cost using LIFO. Here's another one. Which inventory method or cost flow assumption most closely resembles the actual physical flow of goods? FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, or FILO. Supermarkets, sporting goods stores, clothing shops, electronic stores, just about any company you're familiar with sells their oldest inventory first. 